بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Session 3 pertaining to Ramadan and the fiqh of Ramadan So we'll continue what the Imam he said and we reached the point where the Imam he said وَعَلَى سَائِرِ مَنْ أَفْطَرَ الْقَضَاءَ لَا غَيْرِ The Imam he said after mentioning about the situations of the pregnant woman, of the traveler, of the sick person and the old person, right? He mentioned these four situations. Then he said, everybody else, all they have to do is make qada. All they have to do is make up the days that they missed, meaning like the traveler, okay? Meaning like the normal sick person, not the one who has incurable sickness. These people, and for example, the pregnant woman who feared for herself, then they just have to make up the days that they missed. Then he says, إِلَّا مَنْ أَفْتَرَ بِجَمَعْ فِي الْفَرْجِ Except for the one who breaks his fast due to having the relationships with his wife, uh, then this person, he has committed a major sin and his situation is going to be different to others. First and foremost, he has to make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? So what does this person do? فَإِنَّهُ يَقْضِي وَيُعْتِقْ رَقَبَ So this person, as well as making up the fast that he missed, due to having relationships with his wife. He has to make up the fast and he has to free a slave. He has to free a slave. فَإِن لَمْ يَجِدْ فَصِيَامُ شَحْرَيْنِ مُتَتَابِئَيْنِ If he cannot find the slave to free, then he has to make up two months consecutively of fasting. Okay? فَإِن لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ فَإِطْعَمُ سِتِّينَ مِسْكِينَ If he's unable to do that, the two months of fasting, or the freeing of the slave, then he has to feed 60 people. فَإِن لَمْ يَجِدْ سَقَطَتْ عَنْهُ And if he's unable to find that by which he can feed 60 people, then this is removed from him in totality. Meaning that all he has to do is make tawbah to Allah Azawajal. So the first thing is that the ulama, the majority of them, they say that this is not ala taqyir, meaning that you cannot choose which one you want to go to. It's ala tartib. You have to first go to freeing the slave. If you are unable to free the slave, then you go to the next one, which is fasting two months consecutively. If you're unable to do that, then you go to the next one, which is feeding 60 people. If you're unable to feed 60 people, then everything is removed from you, okay? And if you became rich later on, you don't have to feed the 60 people, okay? If you came, became rich a year later on, you wouldn't have to go back and feed the 60 people. Now, the two months from this, that the person has to fast, we said it's consecutively. But when will the person be allowed to break that fast? Meaning, he has to do the two months consecutively, right? So the ulama, they say, for example, if he leaves one day, he's got to the 59th day. If he leaves the 60th day without excuse, he has to go back and start the whole two months again. It's that severe, okay? For a person having relationships in Ramadan, physical relationship. So, but... The two months fasting, there are situations when the person can break the fasting. What are those situations? Eid, for example, Ahsant. If it falls, if one of the days fall on the day of Eid, then he has to break the fasting, right? What else? If he is sick, if he is traveling, if the woman, she is breastfeeding, for example, and she becomes weak. So all of those situations where the Sharia gives you the excuse, in those situations, you are allowed to break the consecutive nature of the two months if you need to do so. The 60 people that you need to feed, they can be fed in one go. It doesn't mean that you have to do it separately. You can bring together a group of 60 people and you can feed them in one go. The Imam, he says, If the person had this relationship with his wife, the physical relationship, and then he didn't make kafara for that. So on one day he had this relationship, right? But somehow he fell into it the second time, on the same day, and he hasn't made kafara. So no matter how many times he had this relationship with his wife on the same day, right? Then the kafara is one. But, as the Imam is going to say now, وَإِن كَفَرَ ثُمَّ جَامَعَ فَكَفَارَةٌ ثَانِيَةٌ But if he has the act, and then he makes the kafara, right? Like freeing the slave. And then, for example, it happens again to him on the same day. Maybe he's lost his mind due to some reason, okay? Newly married. Then, in that situation, he has to do a second kafara, okay? So there's two situations I mentioned. The first of them, the imam, he said that this person, the act takes place 
let's say two or three times, and he does the kafara at the end of those acts, one kafara suffices. The second situation, he does the act, makes a kafara. Then when he does the act again, he has to make a second kafara. If he did the act again after the second kafara, a third kafara, okay? So this is the difference in the situations that the Imam is mentioning. He says, وَكُلُّ مَنْ لَزِمَهُ الْإِمْسَاكِ فِي رَمَضَانِ فَجَامَعَ فَأَلَيْهِ كَفَارًا That everybody who is imperative upon him to make imsak, and he does the jima', he does the act with his wife, then he has to make kafara. What is the man talking about here? What he's saying here is, for example, that there is a group of people, we said, that if they have a shari excuse, a valid excuse from the sharia, they don't have to fast. Let's say, for example, somebody's traveling, right? Over and above 80 kilometers. This person doesn't have to fast. But when he gets to his destination, if he's staying for more than four days, then the rulings of the traveler are removed from him. So now this person, he arrives to his destination in the same day of the fasting. So they say this person has to make imsak. Imsak means he has to refrain from the things which break the fast for the rest of the day, even though he's not fasting. Okay, he had the excuse. He traveled, right? So he broke his fast. But he arrived at his destination, right? During the day, so this person has to make imsak according to the imam and those who agree with him. Now, if this person who's making the imsak, right, if he falls into the relationship with his wife, he also has to pay the fidya. He has to make kafara, sorry. He has to make kafara. He has to make an expiation, right? This is according to the imam and those who agree with him. Others, they say no. They say no. Why? Because Ibn Abi Shayba, Imam Ibn Abi Shayba, he narrates from Ibn Masud radiyallahu anhu, one of the great companions of the Prophet sallallahu who said, Man akila awal nahar falyakur akhirahu. Whoever eats in the early part of the day, then let him eat in the last part of the day. Meaning that if you've broken your fast due to a valid excuse, carry on eating, as long as you don't eat in front of the people. Right? So you don't have to take the rulings of the one who is fasting according to the second opinion of Ibn Masud and those who follow him. But our Imam, he said what? He said that the person who the valid excuse is removed from him, from him like the traveler, or the one who was sick, but then he became well during the day of Ramadan, then these people have to continue with the imsak. They have to continue with refraining from that which breaks the fast. And if he has relationship with his wife, then he has to pay kafara. Okay? طيب, the Imam, he says, وَمَنْ أَخْرَ الْقَضَاءَ لِعُذْرِ حَتَّى أَدْرَكَهُ رَمَضَانَ آخَرَ فَلَيْسَ عَلَيْهِ غَيْرُهُ وَإِنْ فَرَّطَ أَطْعَمَ مَا, أطعم ما, مع القضاء لكل يوم مسكينة. The Imam, he says, that the person who has fasts to make up for Ramadan, okay, but he delayed them due to an excuse until the next Ramadan came, then there's nothing upon him except to make up the fast that he missed. So you had fast from the previous Ramadan. You couldn't make them up until the next Ramadan came. So you fast the next Ramadan. After the next Ramadan, you make up that which you missed from the first Ramadan. Okay? There's nothing upon you. But if you did that, you delayed the making up of the fast due to a non-valid excuse. You were just lazy. You couldn't be bothered. You were too excited doing other things. Then in this situation, you have to make up. And as well as doing that, you have to feed a poor person for each day that you didn't make up. So there's two things, the qadha and, as the imam says, you have to feed every, for every day that you didn't make up a poor person. Tayyip. So in any case, the majority of the scholars, they said that it's tarakhi when coming to make up the days of Ramadan. Tarakhi meaning you can take your time. You can choose when to do it. Why do they say this? Based upon the hadith in Sahih Muslim, where Aisha radiyallahu anha, our mother, the wife of the Prophet sallallahu she said, كَانَ عَلَيَا سَوْمٍ مِنْ رَمَضَانِ فَمَا أَسْتَطِيءٌ أَقْدِيَهُ she said, I used to have fasts that I had to make up from the Ramadan, okay? I wasn't able to make these fasts up except in the month of Sha'ban, meaning the one that came just before the next Ramadan, due to being busy with the Prophet ﷺ. So a whole year went by and she didn't make up the fasts. So all she had to do was just make up the fast whenever she could. There was nothing upon her. Why? Because she didn't do it out of laziness. She did it because she was busy with the rights of the Prophet So in this case, the majority of the ulama, they say that you have the freedom of choice when you want to make the fasts up. But if you're not making them up before the next Ramadan because you're lazy or you didn't take the matter seriously enough, then like an imam, he said in that situation, 
okay? You have to make up the fast and you have to pay for every day that you didn't make up feeding of a poor person. And this is the fatwa that many of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum gave as narrated or as mentioned by Sheikh Abd Aziz Rajihi in his explanation of this book. The Imam says, وَإِن تَرَكَ الْقَضَى حَتَّى مَاتْ لِعُذْرٍ فَلَا شَيْءْ عَلَيْهِ If this person who has fast to make up from Ramadan, he has fast to make up. He left these fasts because of valid excuses like traveling, like sickness, things like this, right? And then he died. So there's nothing upon this person. Why is there nothing upon this person? Because there was no tafrit. There was no uh, negligence. There was no laziness on his part. <clears throat> he wanted to make up the fast when he would have got better or when he finished from his traveling, etc. But he passed away before he could do so. So this person, there's nothing upon him, right? The Imam, he says, وَإِن كَانَ لِغَيْرِ عُذْرِ عُطِّمَ أَنْهُ لِكُلِّ يَوْمٍ مِسْكِينَ But if it was for the fact that he didn't make up the fast due to negligence, he was lazy, then for this person, every fast that he missed, the people will uh, pay on his behalf for a poor person every day that he missed. طيب. And the reason this is, because the majority of the ulama who hold this opinion, they say that you can't fast on behalf of the per person who passed away. They say, why? Because they say while he was alive, you couldn't fast on his behalf. Therefore, also whilst he's passed away, you couldn't fast on his behalf. This is their thinking when they say this, okay? Imam Shafi'i, Imam Nawi, Afwan, from the uh, leaders of the Shafi'i Madhab and others, they say you can fast on behalf of the dead person. Why? Because in the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu in Bukhari, Aisha radiyallahu anha narrates that the Prophet Sallallahu said, Man mata wa alayhi sawm, sama anhu waliyuhu. That whoever passes away and yet he had fast to make up, then his relative will fast on his behalf. His close relative will fast on his behalf. The hadith in Bukhari, okay? So this is the second opinion in the matter. The opinion of our Imam and those who agree with him said, no, you can't fast on his behalf, okay? Rather what you do is you feed a poor person on his behalf. And they say in reply to this hadith, okay, they say that it refers to only those fasts which are vows. Those fasts which are vows. The Imam, he says, إِلَّا أَنْ يَكُونَ مَنْذُورًا فَإِنَّهُ يُصَامْ أَنْهُ The Imam, he says, except if the fast was a vow, then you fast on his behalf. Why do they make this differentiation? They say, our Imam and those who agree with him, they say that that which is من أصل uh, from the, that which the Sharia has obligated upon you, if you didn't fast them, then no one can fast on your behalf. But that which you made obligatory upon yourself through a vow, then this one, it's recommended to fast on your behalf if you passed away. Okay? This is the differentiation that the ulama make in this situation. وَكَذَلِكَ كُلُّ نَظْرِ طَعَى And likewise, any other type of vow that the person made. If he made a vow, I swear to Allah, that Allah, if my son passes my exam, then I'm going to read the Quran three times over. Then this vow should be fulfilled for the person. Oh Allah, if you cure such and such, I'm going to go on hajj. If it's known that the person made this vow, somebody should do that vow on behalf of that person. Tayyip. The Imam, he says now, Bab ma yufsidu sawm. That which breaks and spoils the fast. And this is a very important chapter, as you know, very important part of the book of fasting. So that which, and that which spoils and breaks the fast have three foundations, right? The first of them is jima. Like we said, physical relationships uh, in the day of Ramadan, which is allowed for the man and woman. Why? Because Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Baqarah, It is permitted for you in the night of Ramadan to have relationship with your wife. So where is the proof in this verse that you cannot have this during the day? The opposite understanding. If Allah is saying it's permitted for you in the night, that means before the night it was impermissible. Okay? So during the day it's impermissible to have relationship with your family. And also eating and drinking. Why? Because Allah says, Eat and drink until it becomes clear to you the thread of the dawn from the thread of the night and then continue your fast until the next night okay so eating and drinking is impermissible once the time of fajr has come about other than these three things other than relationships with your wife 
or eating or drinking, these three things. Everything else is from the sunnah or from the ijtihad of the ulama, from the, uh, what's ijtihad? from the striving of the ulama, okay? From the ijtihad of the ulama. So the imam, he says, وَمَنْ أَكَلَ أَوْ شَرَبَ and Now he's going to talk about the one who breaks his fast through eating or drinking, right? But before we discuss this ruling about the one who breaks his fast due to eating or drinking, there are three things that need to be taken into consideration before the hukam is applied to the person. The first of them, that the person he ate knowingly. He ate knowingly. He knew what he was doing. Not the case that somebody had a nap after work, coming back from work, and he's very tired, he gets up after his nap, he's confused, he's dizzy, he picks up the food which is near him for some reason, he eats it. Okay? This person is going to be excused because he did it unknowingly. And the Prophet ﷺ said, regards to this in Bukhari, Man akala, man akala nasiyan wa huwa sa'im, fal yutimma sawmahu, fa innama at'amahu Allah wa saqahu. Whoever eats in the day of Ramadan out of forgetfulness or being unaware, then this person should continue his fast. For verily it was Allah that fed him and it was Allah that gave him to drink. Okay? So the person did it out of forgetfulness, not intentionally, then this person, the hukam of breaking your fast doesn't apply to him. Right? Also, if the person was compelled, forced, for whatever reason, the person is living in an oppressive non-Muslim family, he's a new Muslim, his family is oppressing him and forcing him to eat or drink, this person, He's compelled, he's also excused. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith collected by Ibn Majin, Ibn Majah, and Imam Bayhaqi, the Prophet ﷺ said, Inna Allah Ta'ala tajawaz al-ummati al-nisyan wal-khata wa mastuklihu alayhi. That verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has overlooked for my ummah that which they did out of forgetfulness or out of mistake or that which they were compelled to do. Right? So the hadith is clearly telling us that if you did something out of forgetfulness, out of mistake, or you were compelled, then the hukam doesn't apply to you. Your fast is still valid. Tayyib. And the last of them is knowledge of the ruling. What do I mean by knowledge of the ruling? Yalla, wake up. What do I mean by knowledge of the ruling? Before you apply that hukam on this person, you have to ensure that he had knowledge of the ruling. What does that mean? So for example, the person just didn't know that he wasn't allowed to do these things in Ramadan. He's a new Muslim or he's a Muslim that lived under communism, for example, his whole life and the teaching of Islam was forbidden in those countries. He just didn't know. Knowledge didn't reach him. So in this case, also the person is excused. Tayyib, eating and drinking. The majority of the ulama, they say whatever passes through your mouth, whether it be nourishing or not, then it breaks your fast. So whether for some strange reason you get a piece of tissue, you start chewing it, it's to pregnant people, right? They do crazy things. Gets a piece of tissue, starts chewing it. That also breaks the person's fast. Anything that you put through your mouth, whether it's nourishing or not, according to the majority of the ulama, breaks your fast. Okay? This is the opinion of the who? The jumhur al-ulama. Others like Sheikh Islam and Taymi and others, they say no, only if it's nourishing. Tayyip. So our imam, he goes with the majority. Anything which passes through your mouth, then it breaks your fast. The imam, he says, aw ista'atta. This thing here that the Imam is talking about, he's mentioning if you put any form of medication up your nose and it will reach to your throat, then anything of that nature, nasal drops, if it reaches to your throat, will also break your fast. Okay? The proof of that is the hadith in Tirmidhi of Luqit ibn Subra where the Prophet ﷺ said, Baligh fil istinshaq illa an takun sa'iman. Exaggerate in taking the water into your nose when you make wudu, unless you are in the situation of fasting. Exaggerate in taking the water in your nose when you make wudu, unless you are fasting, okay? So here the, the evidence is saying that if you are fasting, it's something you should avoid. Why? Because if it goes to your throat, it breaks your fast. Tayyip. Likewise, if somebody is in a situation where they're having a checkup and, you know, a camera is put through their nose or through their mouth and it reaches below the throat, then that will also break the fast. The Imam says, "Aw if the person vomits, this breaks the fast. But in which situation? If the person vomits intentionally, if it's unintentional vomit, then it doesn't break the fast. Why? 
because Imam Abi Dawood in Tirmidhi and Nisa'i they narrate that the Prophet ﷺ said مَنْ ذَرَعُهُ الْقَيْءِ فَلَا قَضَاءَ عَلَيْهِ وَمَنْ اسْتَقَاءَ فَعَلَيْهِ الْقَضَاءَ Whoever is overwhelmed by vomit, then there is no uh, making up of the fast for him. And the one who induces the vomit, then he has to make up the fast, okay? So even if the fast is, uh, not the fast, even if the vomit is returned into your mouth and you swallow it, even in that situation, it doesn't break your fast. Why? Because you didn't choose to do so. It wasn't your choice. You were overwhelmed by it. Tayyib? The Imam, he says, The person, he masturbates. If the person masturbates, then this person's fast is also broken. But what's the difference here in the ruling between that and the physical relationship that he has with his wife? The ruling is, the difference, it breaks his fast and he's sinful, so he has to make tawbah and he has to make the fast up. But not like the one who, has, who had physical relationship with his, with his wife, he doesn't have to make kafara. He doesn't have to do the freeing of the slave, of the fasting of the two months, or the, uh, or the feeding of the 60 people. Okay? So this person doesn't have to do that. But he, his fast is broken, and he has to make tawbah to Allah Azawajal, and maybe he gets no reward for his fast whatsoever. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, Rubba sa'imin hadhuhu min siyamihi al wal atash. Okay? That the person, you know, he can lose all of his reward from his fast. In any case, we said that the person, uh, the person who broke his fast through that act, masturbation, he doesn't have to do the kafara. But if somebody masturbated, sorry to get into details, just important issues that people need to know, okay? Somebody may ask you, you need to teach your family, you need to teach the community. If somebody masturbated and he didn't ejaculate for whatever reason, in this situation, the person's fast, is still valid. He continues with his fasting because it's based upon the ejaculation. He didn't ejaculate. His fast is still valid, but he loses his reward based upon the hadith that I just mentioned. Rubba sa'im laysa min laysa lahu hadh min siyamihi illa al wal atish. Perhaps a person who is fasting doesn't have anything from his fasting, uh, no reward. All he has is that he gets hungry and thirsty. Tayyib. And also from this is the one who wakes up and he found that he had a wet dream. Then this person also. His, his fasting is okay because he didn't do anything intentionally. Okay? The Imam, he mentions, أو قبل أو لمس فأمنى أو أمدى. If a person is married, he kisses his wife, he hugs her, newly married, and he ejaculates either, the, either of the two things which come out, then this person, he also breaks his fast if he did it on purpose. Okay? He breaks his fast if he did it on purpose. The ulama, they say that if one can control himself, his desires, then it's permissible for him to hug his wife and to kiss his wife. Why? Because the Prophet Sallallahu said in Sahih Muslim, or Aisha radiallahu anha narrates in Sahih Muslim, كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يقبل ويباشر وهو صائم وكان أملككم لأربه The Prophet Sallallahu used to hug and used to kiss while he was fasting, but he was the most able from amongst you to control himself, to control himself for his needs. So this is the important part. Aisha radiallahu anha said that he used to do so, but he used to be able to control himself. The Imam, he says, another hatta anzal. Or the person, he's looking at his wife, he's newly wed, he's looking at his wife, and he keeps looking at her, or he keeps looking at something, and he brings about the desire, and he ejaculates. He excretes the semen or the madhi. And this person, his fast is also break, broken. This is the one who is intentionally looking for desire, right? Or hajama or ihtajama. Or the person who makes hijama, cupping, right? He has cupping done to him, his fast is broken, as well as the one who is doing the cupping, right? Because the Prophet said in the hadith, collected by Imam Ahmad, after al hajim wal mahjum. The one who does the cupping and the one who is doing it, both of them, they have their fast broken. This is the opinion of the Imam and the Hanbali school of thought, but the majority, they have a different opinion. They say, no, the fasting is not broken. Tayyib. But our Imam and the Hanbali school of thought, they have this opinion. Now the Imam, he's going to repeat what I mentioned already. Some of the things which uh, will cause the rulings of what I just mentioned to take place. Okay, he said that it has to be Amidan. It has to be on purpose. That the things that broke the fast, from what we mentioned, it has to be done on purpose. 
You have to do it knowingly. Okay? لِصَوْمِهِ فَصَدَ صَوْمُهُ So the person did it whilst knowing that he was fasting, then this person's fast will be broken if he ate or he drank or he had relationships or he ejaculated or anything of that sort. Right? وَإِنْ فَعَلَهُ نَاسِيًا أَوْ مُكْرِهًا لَمْ يَفْصُدْ But if he does those things out of forgetfulness or he was compelled, then he is not, uh, his fast is not broken. وَإِنْ طَارَ إِلَى حَلْقِهِ ذُبَابٌ أَوْ غُبَارٌ أَوْ تَمَدْمَدَ أَوْ إِسْتَنْشِقَ فَوَصَلَ إِلَى حَلْقِهِ مَاءٌ أَوْ فَكَّرَ فَأَنْزَلَ The Imam, what he's doing now, he's mentioning things which happened by accident, things which you didn't intend to do. So he's kind of reiterating that these things do not break your fast, okay? We're just coming to the end of it very soon, inshallah. So he says, if something as you're walking by enters into your mouth, because remember I said everything that passes your mouth, right? Th- passes your throat, breaks your fast, whether it's beneficial or it's not beneficial, whether it's nourishing or not nourishing. So if you're walking around, you're yawning and a fly enters your mouth, okay? Then this doesn't break your fast. Why? Because it wasn't intentional, okay? So if you're making wudu and water enters your mouth, it's not breaking your fast because it wasn't intentional. Or the person thinks of something and his fast is broken. He thinks of the wife he's about to marry and his fast break broken. What's the difference between this one and the one I mentioned before? The one I mentioned before, he was intentionally looking and intentionally thinking. Here, you can't control your thoughts. The person, a thought came to him, but it was a powerful thought for him and it caused him to excrete in this situation, the person's fast does not break. Why? Because he didn't intend to do so. Okay? The Imam says, Or he put some kind of medication through his private part. This doesn't break his fast. Why? Because it doesn't reach to the stomach. It doesn't reach to the stomach. Or he has a wet dream. Or he is overwhelmed by vomit. So basically, the rule is anything which you did intentionally will break your fast from those things which break your fast. If you did them unintentionally, they will not break your fast. Whoever eats thinking that it was night, that night has come, but it turned out to be still day, then his fast has broken. So you're fasting 20 minutes before Maghrib, for, for whatever reason, you think that Maghrib has come in, and you broke your fast, but then you find that actually there's still time left until Maghrib, then your fast is invalid and you have to make it up. The Imam, he says, And whoever eats being doubtful that Fajr has come about, then his fast is still valid. Why? Because they say, Because the, the original ruling is that it was night time. So he's doubtful as to whether Fajr has come about. That's why he ate. It was night just a few moments ago. Now he doesn't know has Fajr come in. He's doubtful, so he continued to eat, and later he found that it's Fajr. He continues with his fasting, it didn't break. Why? Because the situation for him, that the original state of affairs was that it was still night time, because he was doubtful as to whether Fajr had come in or not. The Imam, he says, وَإِنْ أَكْلَ شَاكٍ فِي غُلُوبِ الشَّمْسِ فَسَدَ صَوْمُهُ But if he does that, the opposite, he's doubtful whether it's Maghrib or not, and he eats, then his fast is broken. Why? Because he didn't have the right to do so. For him, the original state of affairs was that he was fasting. He can't break his fast until he's sure that Maghrib has come in. When he's sure that Maghrib has come in, then he can eat. So in the situation of the one who is doubtful, then his fast is broken. We'll stop here, inshallah. There's a lot more, but uh, as an introduction, as foundations, uh, this is enough for us, inshallah. And just one thing to add before we go, is that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned in the hadith that whoever fasts Ramadan, and then follows it up with six days from Shawwal, then he gets the reward of fasting the whole month. So those of you who are able to do so after fasting Ramadan, then continue with six days of Shawwal, and you get the reward of the whole month. And I remind you with that which we started the course with, that the Prophet ﷺ said, إِذَا جَاءَ رَمَضَانَ فُتِحَتْ أَبْوَابَ السَّمَاءِ وَغُلِقَتْ أَبْوَابُ النَّارِ وَصُفِدَتْ الشَّيَاطِينَ That Allah جل, the Prophet ﷺ said when Ramadan comes, the gates of the heaven are flung open. And the gates of the hellfire are locked and the shayateen are tied up. So it's as though Allah is saying to you, I've taken away all the temptations. The doors of heaven have been opened for you. So now just walk through those gates. Just walk through the gates of Jannah. Remember this as you're fasting, as you're working, as you're doing anything in the day of Ramadan, 
your objective in every moment of Ramadan is to walk to that gate of Jannah, nothing more. And the Prophet ﷺ said elsewhere, رَغْمَ أَنْفُ رَجْلٍ أَدْرَكَهُ رَمَضَانٍ ثُمَّ لَمْ يُغْفَرْ لَهُ May that person's nose be rubbed in dirt, meaning maybe he, he be humiliated. The person the Ramadan came upon him as a gift. Allah gifted that person with Ramadan, but he couldn't find forgiveness. So we ask Allah not to make us from those. We ask Allah to make us from those who fast Ramadan correctly and that those we are from those who are successful in having Allah's forgiveness. Ameen wa sallallahu alayhi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Any questions or clarifications, then feel free. Wa jazakumullah khair for your efforts. Thank you.